Unfortunately, things have taken a turn for worse, and there's a reason why you're seeing this video. And if you wanna know what's going on, I'll have a timestamp in this video so you can jump right ahead to that part. But if you wanna see this creepy clown content or creepy stalker, whatever you wanna call it, then just continue watching here and you'll eventually get to the part where I can share with you the reason why we're seeing this video. I'm not saying who it is, but where do you think this came from? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so I come back to the house. There's pillows all over the place. Nobody's here yet. Brianna didn't get here yet. I find this right here, uh, an arrow, stuck in the wall, freaking in the wall. Now, who the hell would have just thrown this into the wall? You know, it's bad enough I'm outside having an incident outside. I've had something crash through the window before. Now I have this in the wall. Who came in the house? All right, my camera's been moved too. My security camera. Now where the hell is that? All right, somebody's trying to hide something from me, but you know what? When stuff's recorded, it doesn't matter what happens to the camera because it's still, it's still gonna be on the freaking, I'm gonna go on the computer and find it. What? I mean, seriously, this is, somebody came in my house. I got, what the hell happened to that window now? What the hell is this? No idea. The hell. Better not. I yeah, better not touch that because it's probably where you can fingerprints right there, huh? I'm trying to. I'm going to look this up online. See what the hell this means on here. It's got numbers on it. I have something that has come through my window. It's so freaking cold that I had to board up the window. I'm trying to find a replacement screen. It went through the screen, through the window. Glass was everywhere. This is not a toy. It doesn't look like one, but look, there it is. It's a little piece is broken. Has anybody ever heard of this before? This particular thing, and what does it mean? There's numbers on there. You know, I feel like I'm touching this way too much, so I'm just not touching the ends of it, you know, but... Is this, is this, I mean, this doesn't look like a toy, does it? something that was clever but stupid at the same time. You know that I'm watching you. You talk to the cameras trying to bait and switch me or trying to steer me in the wrong direction. I will know because I have cameras in places you don't know about. So you can try to trick me and it won't work. Sorry. Uh, 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 uh. It's not going to work. Do I know this? Because that is my job as a good friend to know your whereabouts. All friends should know where their friends are and what they're doing. That's, that's the way friendship should be. And when friends don't communicate and be honest, then there's consequences in that friendship. And you, I, have placed them 
and places you'll never find. And I'm going back again to place more. And I did cover your talents so that you wouldn't see where I was planning on putting any of these devices. So, have fun trying to go find a needle in a haystack, or at least I'm going to be so hot, because it's not going to happen, because I know how to play this game better than you. So, that's it. I win. And I will continue to win this game, because France stay France forever! Stay France forever! Forever! forever. Oh look, he sees the camera, huh? Oh, yeah, so now he's got a towel. What are you gonna do, cover up the camera? Yeah, well there's more than one, isn't there, huh? You're gonna need more than one towel for that. Seriously? What is he stupid? Look at he just fell off the freaking chair. Yeah, Bozo, you don't even have to stand. Oh my god. What an idiot. So obviously that's where he ran. He's trying to get something in that in the ceiling. The bulbs up there. Oh now look, he looks like he just found another camera. Oh yeah, now what are you gonna do? We're gonna cover that with your underwear? Oh, he's freaking got a, a rag from the freaking sink, Brianna. It's probably wet too. It's probably gonna mess up the freaking camera. <sighs> oh god. What an idiot. Now look, the lights out. I want to see it. I can't even get into the freaking security stuff. I can't get into the outdoor one. I can't get into the indoor one. Yo, yeah, you think he did this? Maybe. What? It locked us out, so we can't even get into it, huh? Yeah, real smart. Now we can finally get to see who he is. I can't even get into the freaking footage to see for myself. This is aggravating. This is ridiculous.
I, I just finally got into that footage. And you know, I, I'm still clueless. I, I can't, I haven't seen him in 25 years, so I really can't tell. I don't even know what he would look like 25 years later. You know what I mean? I mean, when I known him, it, he had like, he had scars on his face, but they were kind of a different, like they were just more shinier scars, but I don't know if like over time, if it would change. You know, this is ridiculous. I can't be running around. I'm wearing socks because you know what? I take my shoes off. I take my shoes off at the front door because I don't want to scuff up the floor. And then somebody has no respect, comes in my house, two people that is, because when I look at the footage, there's somebody in a blue shirt sitting in here eating something. And then somebody else comes in here, the friggin' wearing a cl clown costume. No, no respect. Wearing shoes on my floor. Where is this? Where is this idiot now? Where is this idiot? Not in the basement. I didn't see him anywhere. He must have went out the basement door. That's why it's unlocked. Well, guess what I'm finding here? Activity, yellow. Yellow's activity. That means activity's going on. Something happens when you see yellow right here. <sighs> it's been freezing, so I can't even, look, I can't even do anything. I think it's just, since he messed with the security. Oh my gosh. I don't think I don't even have to freaking drive the thing. Well, he's gonna go to freaking grass! Thing. With my car, 45 minutes. What, what, what can he possibly be doing for 45 minutes? Enjoy ride. Right. That's creepy. I'm surprised nobody knew this. <laughs> What's going on with this car? Look, look, he can't even, he can't even get out, Rihanna. He can't even, he can't even have to open the freaking door. There's that little button. Electronic, you have to I know, know where I'm it is. Well, he Look, he's like struggling. Yeah, oh my gosh. Looks like almost fell out, too. The freaking track! See, that's why I move the traffic in the car. I don't want to lose my mind about the track and people go. But if there's somebody like freaking mess messing with us and trying to like play like, games with us. I have security cameras in here. Several. Cameras over there, cap cameras over here, camera behind me, right there. And why do I have cameras? Because I have to keep cameras on equipment. You either have clicked on the timestamp in the video description to get to this point, or you actually watched the video in its entirety until you got to this point. And no matter how you got here. I am thankful that you've made it to this point and you're giving me the chance to to speak about the things that bring tears to my eyes, things that put me in an emotional state of mind where I don't want to be. And it's a heartbreaking thing that we all deal with. But um, I've lost 
a lot of things in my life, including people who I care about. And sharing this video and other similar videos of the creepy clown content take me to a place. It's kind of a mixture of emotions. I've lost several people in my life and it, it breaks my heart. People should be able to live the full term of their life and be around for for as long as you're around, right? I mean, you, you hope that's the way it's gonna be. But unfortunately, over the years, I've lost family members who have passed away and I've lost friends who have passed away. Uh, just things happen in life. And I was in a relationship, you know, with this woman, very, very caring, loving person. You know, it's more of a friendship that could have built onto something bigger and, um, I just had plans in my life to settle down and move to the beach, either South Carolina or Georgia or Florida. So I decided Georgia was the place. I figured South Georgia is a good place. And so that's what I did. There was a career opportunity that was lined up for me. There were things that I was hopeful for as far as my future with this woman in my life and, and a career opportunity and buying a home to accommodate someone in my life, and, you know, to bring happiness to someone else so that we can bring happiness to each other, like we can compliment each other. And I figured I had enough bedrooms in case I needed to help someone else out in the family who may need my guidance in a room to stay in. When I say that, it could be a friend, it could be family. I'm not trying to be too specific, but I try to leave those doors open. And unfortunately, life can just throw you a curveball and then things just turn in a different direction and they're not as planned. and the career that I walked into that I was that I specifically moved down here for besides settling down with someone special that was a short-lived experience it was basically a bait-and-switch kind of job and it ended up turning out to be a nightmare and they wanted me to relocate to a place to do the job over 200 miles away and not even give me a pay increase and then I'm responsible for accommodations if I don't decide to take their allocation for accommodations which covers a hotel room that's shared with another person and I'm not that kind of person who wants to be in a hotel room with a stranger I'd rather have my own private room but if I wanted that I'd have to pay out of my pocket because that's how they work and they cut corners and they weren't about doing the job right. They were about getting it done fast. And this was doing electrical work in a construction company. And uh, besides all that, there's a loss. There's a loss of relationships that I've had and connections that are broken. Moving down here was like the icing on the cake. It just got worse and it got worse because things didn't fall into place like I was thinking. I thought I was gonna settle down, have a place for those who I care about to visit or stay as long as they want. I thought I was gonna have, you know, the significant other in my life who was going to settle down here with me and we were gonna grow old together and do walks together, ride bikes together, go on the beaches, you know, the sandy beaches and walk the beaches together. The things that I had thought were gonna happen this was supposed to be my final resting place, my final home. This is supposed to be my last place that I was going to move into. And it was like everything was happening all at once. In the way it happened, it was just hard for me to back out, especially since the job opportunity was there. It was confirmed. I couldn't predict the future on how it was going to happen after I had already had purchased a home here and settled down and changed my driver's licenses and all these things, like all these things happened. And then I got stuck into this. And then I didn't realize things were gonna get complicated when it comes to my health and my health anxieties and the uncertainties. And I've been spending most of my time going to the cancer specialist, getting CT scans and blood work and, and more testing and 
they were going to do a biopsy and then they decided to do CT scans to be less invasive and then it's going to the cardiologist because there was a heart attack that happened and I and I you know I deny these things to myself like uh, I didn't have a heart attack that was heartburn or I don't realize these things are happening to me and then I find out the hard way when I go to the cardiologist and then I get a scare they kind of scare the hell out of you and with all the things that have been happening living alone losing loved ones in my family losing friends I feel like there has to be some kind of virtual escape through YouTube because that helps me cope with my loneliness, my anxieties, especially my health anxieties, and just feeling so down and feeling like I failed. I failed my friends, I failed my family, I failed everybody. Like I, I feel like I disappointed a lot of people and it just breaks my heart that I've come to this point in my life where I thought things were gonna finally settle down and I was finally gonna be with someone special and, and experience this beautiful part of the country together and then have people who I care about come visit me and, and experience that with me. Because you cannot predict where people are going to move once they settle down in their lives. You know, you have someone who might want to move across the country. And so do you stay in the town that you've been in for many years to develop relationships with people? There was one place that I stayed for about 30 years, right? Developed relationships, friendships, been around family, and then I move way down here to Georgia. And it's not like I'm on another planet. I'm still on the same planet, but it just feels like those miles between me and those people I left behind have increased significantly over the last year and a half or so, but I'm still in the same place. But the distance seems much greater than it was when I first moved, as time has made that distance even further. So it's, it's very saddening and, and heartbreaking. And so I feel like uploading this YouTube content, and I, and I know it seems repetitive, but it's taking me back in time to a part of my life where I wasn't alone, where I wasn't sad, where I was enjoying my life and the things around me were positive and I didn't have those health anxieties like I have now. I mean, I've had some health anxieties and I've done things to be in the best health that I can, working out, eating the right foods, that put me in the right direction. So those health anxieties were minimal. They weren't consuming my everyday life. They weren't overwhelming like they are now. And they were much worse a couple months ago. It's a combination of loneliness and feeling like that I'm being discriminated against when it comes to employment because of my age. I try to find something rewarding to do to provide some kind of service to the community, whether it's me doing electrical work or technical work or even helping out in the community doing yard work, whatever it may be. I, I wanna be able to do those things, but whenever it comes to something that involves physical labor, that makes me feel good about getting my exercise, those jobs are being offered to people that are much younger, in their 20s, 30s, maybe 40s, like early 40s. But, but once you mention you're in your 50s, they either don't want you to work or they'll give you a different kind of job that's sedentary where you sit at a desk and that's not me. I can't do that. I cannot put my health into that. I've already was down that road and my blood pressure jumped up ex significantly higher to the point where I was on the borderline of having a stroke. There were symptoms that were happening. That's how bad it was. And when I went to the cardiologist, they were like, now I got more tests to go do. I had a Holter monitor test and there's other tests they're going to do. Now they're going to do an echocardiogram, then another one. So I am, I'm all over the place. And that's why you're seeing this video. I'm trying to break the cycle. I'm trying to get away from this creepy clown stuff, but there's a part of it that brings me back virtually into time to a better state of mind that I was in. Even though making that kind of content could it was stressful at the time because I was chasing that YouTube viewership high, you know, like trying to, to have fun with the algorithm because it was it was really doing well with the, the creepy con content back then in 2016 and 2017. It was doing really well. And I revert back to that time and I've recreated some of that for now because I'm trying to take myself, like I said, back in time mentally to that point in my life where I wasn't alone and where things were working out. And I actually had this woman in my life and the relationship was still strong. And, and we were in that point of our lives where we had plans. Things were just, seemed like they were set in stone for the future. Like this is what's gonna happen, but we have to wait, process out. We have to, you know, 
let the time go by. And then when the timing's right, this happens. And so I travel back in time mentally through YouTube vicariously. So I'm living through myself vicariously. And when I'm seeing that creepy clown stuff, I'm seeing that at the part of my, the time of my life where I was happy, where there was excitement because of being around people who just made me happy. And then sharing that excitement with other people. The excitement of creepy clown videos doing well. Like, I was like excited about that. And I was like sharing that excitement with my friends and family. And I was like, wow, this is doing well. Look at this. A lot of people are excited. And we, we seemed all excited together. At least that was my, my perception of it. And whenever we would go places, there was recognition. There was people who come up to us, people who were like happy to see us, people that were, you know, excited and people who wanted autographs. I mean, it was just that kind of thing. It was like, that recognition and you felt like you've changed people's lives and they're happy to see you and they're in tears and they're full of joy and no matter where we went we we had that recognition and acknowledgement and it's just an amazing feeling to see people smile and crying and, and tears of happiness because they see you and i've went places and they say hey i know you you're that guy on youtube I know you, I love, I watch your videos. And then they want pictures with you, selfies. And it's like, it's an amazing experience. So when I'm uploading these creepy clown videos, it's not because I'm trying to chase the views. Yeah, I'm trying to get the algorithm to kind of click again to make it work so I can reach out to everybody. So in a way, it's more about the algorithm than it is the views because I feel like YouTube pushes all your other videos. If your videos that you're uploading continuously click with the algorithm, if it makes the algorithm work, then it reaches out to people who have been subscribed. So I'm trying to connect to everybody. I'm trying to connect to as many people who have subscribed over the years. And I feel like it's hard to connect with everybody if I am just going on my nature walks or if I'm cooking something and sharing a cooking video because everybody came for the creepy clown content. Everybody came for the paranormal. Everybody came for the family vacations and, and all that. And so I think what happens was the family vacations faded out because everybody started prioritizing the creepy clown stuff. And then when I would upload family vacations, they wouldn't do as well as creepy clowns. And then so I got pushed to doing more creepy clowns because I figured that's what everybody wanted. And I was the kind of person who was trying to make everybody happy. You know, I like to see people happy. Just like when I would go somewhere and somebody would say, hey, I, I love your videos. And then they would smile and they would like be so happy and want a picture. And you know, that made me happy seeing them happy. So I'll make a video that I might not be happy about making, that, that might be stressful making, like sitting down editing for 20 hours, 30 hours to make a 30, 40 minute video. It's not fun, but I do it for you. It's a sacrifice that I make as a YouTube content creator. But the thing that breaks my heart about that is when I put 30, 40 hours into editing, such as going on a road trip, it's not just the editing, it's the traveling, it's the driving, it's the time I put aside to to go places because there's times where I go on road trips just to make YouTube content just specifically for that because it may be a specific place of interest that I go to that I feel would be good for content and then there's places I go because I want to go for myself and so the trip may have two reasons or several different reasons more than two so I guess it 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 breaks my heart that people have lost touch with wholesome family vacation type content. So like if I go on vacation by myself, you know, or I go somewhere, I feel like it's not getting the love that it used to get. And it seemed like everybody enjoyed me being at resorts. Like I remember the days of going for a swim in the pool and just feeling the excitement of the summer and the beautiful weather and being at these vacation resorts, swimming in the pools there. And those videos did really well. And then I would go to these places. In the recent years, I would go to these beautiful tropical places and go for swims and share those videos or be at my friend's house and swim and share it and it's like it's not doing well so I'm like well it used to do really well years ago i love getting my exercise in the water and swimming is is great exercise and it seemed like videos of me on vacation and you know, just doing these fun family adventures it just seemed like they were doing well in the past especially the beach and and swimming in the water and having pool parties and all that excitement it just it's like when i do that now nobody wants to watch but if you go back in time it's like everybody enjoyed it but then i think what happened was the creepy clown content took away from that excitement and then everybody's like ah oh, we don't want to see family vacations we don't want to see the world around you we don't want to see the beautiful beaches and the crystal clear water that's sparkling blue and you know just the excitement you know it's like 
all they wanted was the drama, the, the creepy clown stuff. And I felt like I was pushed in that direction to where I had to do that because if I were to share a moment that made me feel happy and, and I, it was something that was enjoyable and, and I uploaded on YouTube, it was like, it had lack of interest. It was like, nobody really wanted to see that, you know? It's like, it's almost like majority of people just wanted to see creepy clowns. No matter how much I would try like get away from it, it seemed like it just pulled me back in, kind of like being in the mafia. It's not like I was in the mafia. I'm just saying, you know, like they say, you know, once you're in, you know, it's kind of like that thing. So I just want to break free from it. And I've made videos of this before, but I don't think I've gotten this deep into it. There is a much deeper connection on a, an emotional level. And the reason why I don't want to share clown videos is because I don't find it entertaining anymore. It was fun at the time when I had those who were part of it, who supported me emotionally. I even had some friends that were part of the whole filming process, you know, and those were limited times, you know. Or a few times, not a whole lot, but I cherish anything, even if it happened once, you know, it's like I cherish those moments. And so it brings me back to times where I had friends who were really good friends in my life who may have partaked in being the clown. You never know. I'm just saying, hypothetically speaking. So it's, it's a very emotional thing for me because there was a time in my life where things were doing much better. I was much happier. I felt fulfilled and YouTube was so fun and exciting and the engagement was incredible and it was alive and having 2.6 million subscribers actually Actually, back then it was almost three. I've lost how many? I think it was like, it went up to like 2.8, 2.9 million subscribers. Now it's down to 2.6. I feel like I'm failing everybody. But the only thing that I feel is different is time in itself. I wish I knew the answers to this. The other thing that breaks my heart is 17 years. 17 years is what I put into YouTube content creation. That's a lot of time. There was times where I felt like walking away from it. But that was back when I actually had the support of others around me and I felt strong emotionally. Like there's, there's no problem for me to walk away from YouTube because I already had a fulfilling life. But now I felt like being alone and things didn't go as I was hoping and I've lost loved ones along the way. I feel like it's hard to let go of YouTube now. And when I see it falling apart, it makes me want to cry. And I've cried because of this and it hurts. It's, an, it's sad. I'm actually seeing a therapist over this because this has been very depressing and I've been dealing with the anxiety. So I am seeking help on that and I do positive things. I, I go for my walks. I try to get my 20K steps every day. I'm doing things active, uh, you know, in the community as far as just going to these places and staying active. That's the biggest thing and eating healthy. You know, I could just go in a corner somewhere feeling bad about my whole life and feeling alone and just feeling sorry for myself, but I can't do that because I don't want to be that person who just deteriorates and evaporates into nothing. My mental health is way too important. My physical health is way too important. I have too much to live for to just let it all fall apart and me starve myself because I can't, you know, eat because of feeling sad and anxiety. And that's why I'm proactive and focusing on staying healthy and focusing on my mental health. And I'm talking to a counselor, you know, a therapist, like, and I have a friend who is just like a therapist. So that just even helps even more having that advice. But the problem is the difference between someone who does it for a profession and a friend is a friend could be more personal. And they might tell you what you want to hear, but someone in the profession is going to probably be more logical and bring the truth to you. And so it may be a whole different conversation, but, uh, it's all about feelings and emotions and sadness and losing loved ones and how, how you cope with that and whether or not you can hold a job and whether or not, I mean, there's so many different things. I'm not a lazy person. The problem is I have too much energy and I can't sit down for a office job. I can't sit down for a desk job. I can't be on the phone just calling people. I can't just sit. I have to be physically active. As much as I would like to work where I can sit and use my brain power and do things that can help a company grow. I want to be physical. I need to be physically active for my physical health. And without that, I feel like it compromises my mental health because then I have anxiety about not getting enough exercise. And then I start over getting overwhelmed by looking at the blood pressure readings 
and seeing things going in the wrong direction and then these scares with the doctors and and all that and my cancer anxieties you know these are things that are overwhelming so that's why you're seeing this creepy clown video because this is my virtual escape to take me back into a time where I didn't have all these these issues, these worries, these things that are weighing me down. You know, I've had the health anxieties, like I said, but not to this extreme. I think my health anxieties peaked about four or five months ago, and then they started to dwindle down because there were some reassurances after some recent visits with the cancer specialists and some CT scans that come back saying things are looking better than they were initially. So. If things don't progress worse when it comes to your lymph nodes and things going on in your body when you get scans done, that's a good sign. If things stabilize, that's a good sign. So now I just gotta get past this whole cardiology thing and hopefully this is gonna be fine. But that's where I stand right now. I know this is a long dragged out video, but deep down I, I am sad and I have anxieties and I'm doing what I can to, to deal with that. I wish my friends would be there for me more than they are. I, I feel like they they have too many things going on in their lives and they just don't have time for me or maybe my problems are just too much for them to handle because they got enough problems of their own. And sometimes friends only, you know, want you around when they want you around, you know, when when they have nothing else to do. And unfortunately, that's kind of how things work out, you know, or if they need you for something, you know, but whenever you have a problem, it's like, sometimes I feel like they, they don't have time for you. Or, you know, I have friends who live too far away as well. Unfortunately, even though I moved down here, I did move closer to some friends, but still not close enough. And then I've moved away from some friends. But they've came and visited over the years, you know, over almost two years now. They they came to visit a couple times. But I've there's a big disconnect with a lot of people in my life since moving down here. And I wish there was a way to reconnect, but I can't keep trying. So I, I actually gave up on it because I felt like there's it was doing more harm to me emotionally by trying than it was if I just let it go. Plus, you know, I have so many things that I'm worried about right now with my health, even though I know things are looking better. I do have issues with my heart, and that's scary because, you know, you could just like that, you could be gone because of a heart attack or a stroke. So I'm dealing with that right now, and it's something that's hereditary. I could tell you that much. That's where I stand, you know, financial struggles. I'm barely holding on right now. Don't have enough money to pay the bills, unfortunately. So I'm tapped and tapping into my savings a lot and I'm not here to cry about finances, but I'm just trying to be transparent. And it seems like whenever I'm transparent, sometimes people take it as I'm just whining and want people to feel sorry for me. But can't we just agree that I'm just being transparent? Is there no option to be transparent here? That's kind of where I'm going. So my next thing is having to move out of here between the expenses of keeping this house, the taxes, all the other things involved, insurance, utilities. I mean, I don't have to worry about electric. I got the solar, but the water bill is, is, is up there for some reason. I don't know why it's so high. It's much cheaper where I lived before. Um, utility, the internet gets expensive I've got to pay HOA fees and <laughs> they just went up homeowners insurance went up car insurance doubled I'm like you know it's it's insane I'm like why am I still here like I'm gonna have nothing left in my retirement nothing left in my savings if I keep staying here so I need to make at least $3,600 a month you know you want to know why you saw the clown video is because I 
figured the way to reach out to the, the majority of you watching would be to pull you in with the clown video. So then you could get an understanding after you see the clown video, or if you're curious about why you're seeing the clown video and jump to the part that I explain why you saw the clown video. At least I got you to this point. Cause if I were to just throw out a video of me just I don't know, walking on a beach. If I was just doing anything outdoors, even swimming, like I thought it used to do well, but now when I go swimming, like who, nobody cares. They're like, oh, I don't see you having fun in the pool. But uh, I feel like the only way to really throw that line out there and reel someone in is to throw out a creepy clown video and then uh, pull you in that way so you, you can get to this part of the video and understand why you saw the clown video to begin with and understand what's going on in my life and where I am and why I gravitate towards making YouTube videos. 17 years of making YouTube videos, it's hard to just walk away from it, especially now with me being alone and having trust issues. It's not, it's not easy trusting anybody after what I've been through in relationships and friendships and just dealing with people in life in general, the scammers out there, the gold diggers, the people that are, are wanting you in their life for the wrong reasons. I've been taken advantage of. I've been too generous over the years. And my generosity put me in the poorhouse, basically. You know, yeah, you can have a nice house, but when you don't have money to keep up with things, that's when things get complicated. If I don't sell this house before I run out of my savings and my retirement, if I cannot pay all the bills and make my payments here and there, including credit card payments, if I don't make any of those, my credit's going to get destroyed. If I don't pay the bills, foreclosures happen then I have nothing left. I got to get ahead of that. That's why I was looking for jobs. Every time I see YouTube's not doing well, I'm like, uh, you know what? Let me just go on Indeed and search some jobs and let me just see if I can find something that will not discriminate against my age because I feel like I need to do something to keep me from feeling lonely. And, and working for somebody keeps me working with people. But sitting at a desk is not what I was signing up for. But apparently one company bait switched me Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, I got a lot of, you know, I can do this and engage with people and getting physical exercise. I'm installing cables and wires and, and hardware and doing you know, technical work. This is fun. And then all of a sudden, after a while, I'm pushed to desk duty. What? What is it? That they hired somebody younger now because they want someone to run around and do all these things. The problem is I'm about quality work. I, I take my time doing work because I want it done right and I get it done thoroughly. So seems like these companies nowadays, they just want someone to get stuff done fast, regardless of whether or not quality is compromised. And so maybe they're not happy with the speed of the work that I do, but they should be happy for the quality of the work that I do. So they hire someone younger, thinking they're going to be faster. I'm 52, but I still run fast. I mean, super fast, faster than people that are in their twenties. And this is no exaggeration. I am a fast runner. I'm, I'm fast at a lot of things, but when you become, when you do stuff too fast, when it comes to the technical stuff, you may skip on the quality or the finer details. And that's not me. So now I can see, put the guy on desk duty. He's not getting the, the work done fast enough. We don't care about the quality work. We just want the, the, the quantity of work. And this is what's aggravating, but that's where I stand. You know, a lot happened in my life, lost a lot of loved ones. You see the creepy clown videos. I really don't want to have to keep uploading that, but I feel like that's the only way to get your attention. It's the only way to pull you in so, so you can get to this point and see this video and have a choice to, to whether or not you want to know why you saw the video. The cycle needs to end, but I still want to be able to grasp your attention. I still want to be able to, to have your interest in a video outside of having to make a creepy clown video to get your attention. So let me know what would work. How would I get the attention so that we can have that positive engagement here and have that sense of community like I used to have on the YouTube platform because I miss that. I'm gravitating towards that. Everything else is failing in my life. I cannot find jobs that want to hire me because they're looking for people who are much younger. And they also don't like hiring someone who doesn't have much consistent long-term experience because even if you run your own business and you had the same business for over 20 years, they look at it as, okay, you're unemployed. It's kind of how they see it. They don't see you working for a company that on the map, that's something that's a big company. They don't see consistency. They don't see someone staying at a certain company for a long time. They may see me here for a year or two and there and for a year, five months here, a few months there. They don't see the longevity in a company. Unfortunately, that's how it is. When you're self-employed, sole proprietor, you're running your own business and you've been doing the same line of work for 20 years. It's like, they look at it like, oh, well, yeah, well, that's not really any proof of employment. We don't, how can we get any kind of 
references from that if you're running your own business because you can just who's going to be your reference for that business you know as far as punctuality uh all that you know what i mean so that's the problem anyway uh i gotta go we got a crazy storm coming and uh who knows what's gonna happen but i need to make sure i'm ready for it i mean i do have my backup power batteries and solar panels so if power goes out i'm ready but i might have to stock up with some extra food before it gets bad but uh, take care and be safe, everybody.